I just saw Venom, The Last Dance, and I have a few thoughts. Are they good thoughts? Yeah, they're, they're, not, they're not bad. Hey everyone, this is Digital Shark Cootery. Thanks for stopping by and shout out to all of our new subscribers. Thank you so much for your support. And if you're new to this channel, check out the subscribe button and uh, don't forget to like the video. And if you like Venom, I want to know your thoughts on Venom, The Last Dance in the comments down below. Let me know, chat. I love hearing from you. I read and reply to all the comments. How fast do you think you can get that thing to go without killing it? Only one way to find out. Right off the bat, did I like this movie? Did I not like this movie? I actually, I enjoyed this movie. I said in another video, I've liked all the Venom movies and I, I actually, this was an entertaining ride for Venom. I don't know if it's as good as the first Venom. Still, I think it's better than Let There Be Carnage. I'm a huge Carnage fan, so it's paining me to say that right now, but I think I do like this one better than Let There Be Carnage. It just, it feels a little bit more, I guess, fleshed out. Spoilers ahead, so just a word of warning. The movie kicks off with Null, and Null is on his home planet, and he kind of gives you the backstory of who he is and what he is and how he's searching for a codex. And when he gets the codex, he can be unleashed onto the galaxy and the Sonyverse, I guess. And uh, he's, he, But he needs the codex. So right from the get-go, we're like, okay, this movie is about a codex. Who, what, where, when, how is this codex? And clearly, the answer comes when we get to the real beginning. This one picks up where we left off with Eddie Brock enjoying a beverage in a bar, and then he gets sucked right back to his universe. That's it, right back. And Venom declares that they are home. They are back in their own uh, multiverse world, and he says that he is sick of the multiverse. As they leave the bar, Venom decides to throw a tip over to the bartender, leaving a little piece of himself behind. We're going to get back to that a little bit later, but outside you see a news report and that Detective Mulligan is dead, and Eddie Brock is wanted for that murder, so he is a fugitive, as Venom lets him know. <clears throat> and that's where I'm going to stop right there and just say that the relationship between Eddie and Venom has always been fantastic in these movies, and in this one, they ramp it up a notch. They dial it up a notch. It is fantastic. The, the dynamic between Venom and Eddie Brock is spot on. It'll make you laugh, it'll make you smile, and it's worth the... Honestly, I thought it was worth the price of admission just to watch their dynamic and their relationship grow throughout this. They're best buds, but it's also kind of like a psycho relationship. It's a lot of fun. And I think if they made just one more movie where they just did that, there was no action, I think even that would be entertaining. But the action actually isn't so bad in this one. The action picks up right after this, actually. Venom needs some food, so they go in, and there's some caged dogs, which is never a good thing. They go in, and a little gang comes over, and starts to, starts to harass Eddie. And Eddie's like, you don't want to do this. And he goes, oh, I do want to do this. And he's like, ah. And the, and the one gang leader says, I have a demon in me or to some effect or to something like that. And, and Eddie says, not like me. And that is what a massive fun, a really fun fight ensues between the gang and, and Eddie Venom. Say when. When. And at the end, Eddie loses his shoe. A dog eats his shoe in half. And Venom decides to give him cowboy boots. For what purpose? I guess it's just a gag because he drops them two seconds later when they're on the plane. They decide that they're going to go to New York, that they're going to restart their life in New York. They have so black, they can blackmail someone over there so they can go live in New York. Eddie Brock makes a reference about how now he knows a superhero that doesn't know how to fly. He's the one that knows a superhero that doesn't know how to fly. And Venom says, oh, I can fly. And that's when we get the part from the trailer where you see them on the side, outside side of an aircraft. Uh, and it's great. But then... But then the alien demon tracks them down. Null has unleashed xenophages all over. And one of them has tracked down Venom and Eddie. And when they're on the plane, the xenophage finds Venom and Eddie. They have to take off off of the plane. The monster gets eaten up by an engine. Eddie and Venom, Eddie and Venom land in the desert. They're in no man's land. They're in the middle of nowhere. And that is when Venom clues him in on who Null is, what Null is all about. And how they are the codex because Eddie died and their life forces merged creating this codex. And with that, Null can escape his, his planet, his prison planet, and take over the world. And that's a bad thing. So now we know from this point on in the movie, Venom has to stay hidden within Eddie Brock. Which makes the dynamic even funnier. It makes the... I, well, sometimes you're like, well, I kind of wish wanted to see Venom do some fighting. You get that. You get that enough. It's a very short movie. It's only like an hour and a half, I think, hour and 40 with credits somewhere or somewhere around there. It's very short, but it's fun. It never stops being fun. It's a good ride from beginning to end. Okay, no, that's a lie. There's a few things 
there, he encounters a family in Nevada, and the first scene with the family is actually quite funny. I was like, oh, this was an entertaining, uh, an entertaining piece. And then they have a, they, he joins them on the car, and they're on like this road trip. And you're like, okay, this is fun, and still a couple laughs in there. And you're like, okay, fine. But you don't know where they're going, and you're worried in the back of your mind. You're like, I think this is where they're going, but I really hope they don't play that card. Then they go their separate ways. But Rise Iphens is playing the dad in this family, and I'm like, eh, he's going to come back. The family is all about, they're on a road trip to Area 51. It's being decommissioned, and they're actually, the new Area 51 is Area 55, which is a 100 feet sub-level that cannot be detected by humans or aliens. And this is when we see Detective Mulligan once again, at his form toxin and he is told we are told through him that null is around and that eddie and venom are the codex this is when we are told that null is around he has found them they cannot be found he doesn't know that the codex is out there at this point yet he will kill us all but he knows that null is looking for the codex and this is when the fun begins they need to get to new york and they need to get there fast so venom decides you know what i'm gonna do I'm going to take over possession of this horse. And he becomes a horse. And it's a really funny gag. You've probably seen it. It's in like the trailers and stuff. But he takes over the horse. And they run and they jump and they fly. And you're like, this is fun. And again, it's the buddy cop. It's the it's the, the buddy road trip movie that you're watching. You're like, this is a lot of fun. I want to see more of this. But then the soldiers catch up to them. And then Daniel has to separate from Eddie. And either we see fish venom. We see frog venom. We basically see the Super Mario Brothers of Venom. In this moment, Eddie and his soldier have a confrontation under the water. She pulls out her gun on him. He kind of fights with her, fights with her, pulls the gun back, and she ends up shooting herself, or he kind of shoots her. And the guilt, the guilt rids him the entire movie. He's filled with guilt through the entire movie, begin to end, basically. But he mentioned this a few times, and he can't believe that he did this. He's not a murderer. That's not who Eddie Brock is. But now you see it. And it's a really, it's kind of like, they kind of play it up as a harsh moment. Like, it's pretty emotional, where he's just staring at her, and you see the blood slowly come off of her in the water. And the dead body just kind of floats away. But then, of course, you know, the movie, we got to keep going. We're an hour and a half. There's a waterfall. So another soldier is coming to him. And there is a waterfall. And, oh, my gosh, Eddie Brock is going to get killed going over the waterfall. Frog Venom's like, not on my watch, Al. Jumps out of frog form, heads over to Eddie. And then he's like, what are you doing? Null's going to find us. And he goes, I can't let you die, Eddie. They go over the waterfall. And Venom takes over his body, kills three soldiers. Eddie and Venom escape. And then this is when they encounter the family on their way to Area 51. The family and Eddie depart ways in Las Vegas where they do some gambling and meet up with Mrs. Chen and have a dance sequence. And you find out Mrs. Chen is doing very well at the casino. Like, very well. She is not a cooler at all. I'm a cooler at the casino. She is not a cooler. She's doing very well. And they have a moment and the soldiers find them and they bring them over to Area 55. It's very simple. Area 55 has a bunch of symbiotes. So there's a ton of symbiotes there. And they're doing experiments on them and trying to figure out what's going on. Toxin is the main one, obviously, that's giving the information. They separate Eddie and Venom. And Toxin says to Eddie, he's like, you're the Codex. This is a problem. The plan is to kill one of them. Because if one dies, the Codex dies. That's the ultimate plan. Some of the scientists are like, you can't do that. The soldiers are like, we have to do this. So there's the, that's the big feud going on right there. And this is the Area 51 stuff. It's kind of all over the place. It's really fun, but it's, this is when it be, turns into a spectacle. This is the spectacle. And the one thing I really didn't care much for was when the family kind of showed up. Because, of course, there has to be a heroic moment with the family, which is whatever. And Eddie has to save them. My thing was it was paint by numbers. And they kind of, I, it felt a little bit like they were forced into it. Like, I know, like, they say the whole time they're going to Area 51. I get it because they're decommissioning it. Which is, I just felt, that part felt a little bit forced. It didn't take me out of the movie. Like, there's been other instances in other movies where they've done things like that. It didn't take me out. And there wasn't a lot of emphasis so much on the kids either. Because usually you have kids in movies, like, put the, put the kids in peril. Then people will really, really feel emotional connection to it. And the strike fears. Like, no, it doesn't always work like that. It's usually cheesy to me. The kids in this one, they were fine. There's a part where the, the boy gives Eddie Brock chocolate. And he goes, Julian, chocolate. I'm not allowed to have it, but here you go. And he's like, what? And he gives a chocolate to the Venom and Venom, when Venom and the boy meet, we get to see that. One thing with this movie, speaking of the boy, that really got me was it's all about kind of how Eddie wants to start a family. You get that because he, the family's mentioned, Venom mentions it to him. Every, he sees the kid and, and Venom's like, this is the life we're good at. And he's like, yeah, 
and you would have been a good dad, Eddie, because the kid's afraid of aliens. And he's like, don't worry, there's no such thing as aliens. And later on, obviously, he finds out that there is and, and they assure him that everything's fine. But he says, you're going to be a good dad. And there's no payoff to that. I, I wasn't sure if they're like the movie. You don't think about it, but in those scenes, you kind of do. You're like, oh, where's this going? Where's this headed? Like, is he going to meet up with Anne? But no, that's just, she's barely even mentioned a reference in this which is fine. It's not about that. It's about Eddie and Venom and their relationship. And it's re- and I think the relationship has to be strong because of where we're going, because of the events that take place after Area 50 or inside Area 51, 55. And that's the xenophages find them there. And they start, there's a whole chaos there. All those symbiotes kind of get free. They and the, and the xenophages, you know, they just start taking out the, the symbiotes, like one, like boom, boom, boom. They just start, they're getting massacred massacred strickland gets impaled uh and as he's about to die eddie and venom have a heart-to-heart moment they're kind of in hiding off to the side they have a heart-to-heart moment and they talk about going to new york and how great it would be to go to new york and they're going to get to new york but at the same time you know that what's happening is they're talking about their dream but in reality this is the end of their story the end of the line for them is because if the codex survives null survives and he gets free and that can't happen there's only one way out of this for Eddie and Venom, and that's death. And and because they're not I, they're a we, they do it together. So they get out of there, they decide, okay, now it's time to get out. They march on, the symbiote takes over for over Eddie, they march their way over, and they the xenophages, there's a multiple of them now. They go after them, there's a whole thing. There's it's all like, you know, it's a CG overlord. And then all of a sudden, Eddie gets spat out. He gets spat out. And he goes, what are you doing? And he's like, it's only I, Eddie. That's a really bad Venom impression. I'm so sorry. And Eddie's, Eddie can't believe what he's seeing. Venom is sacrificing himself. Venom picks up a metal door, puts it over because all these chemicals are coming on and killing the xenophage and Venom. And then he says something to, uh, I think he says something along the lines of we'll meet again or something. I'm paraphrasing. I just saw it. I can't quite remember. Well, correct me in the comments. And Eddie watches on. And I've got to be honest with you, between the conversation about going to New York and then this moment here, this was for the third movie in the Venom series. That really doesn't take itself too seriously most of the time. That was, I was like, oh, this is, this is good. They did a, I thought they did a really good job of kind of having the finite part of their relationship of kind of being like, this is the end of the, the, the line. This is the end of their story. You kind of felt that they might negate it later on, but you felt that in that moment. At least I did. I thought, oh, they did. They did that very well. They did that well. But a bunch of the scientists and soldiers, they're still scattered around. They got to be saved. So all of a sudden, Dr. Payne reaches into her pocket. And earlier we saw her take a vial with a symbiote in it. And she unleashes a symbiote on her. And we get Agony. Agony shows up for all of four seconds, saves the day. But when Agony is gone, we learn that Dr. Payne is no longer in pain. Let's rewind, shall we? Earlier in the movie, when we're first introduced to Dr. Payne, she is asleep in her bed, as we all do. And as we all do, she dreams about her origin story, as we all do, like I said. In this origin story, her and her twin brother are outside on a beach. Normal, at night. Normal for kids to be on the beach at night. They say some stuff about he's going to be a scientist, a NASA or something like that, or NASA scientist, and she's just his twin sister. And they see the lightning and they say, head north, and they run and they get struck by lightning. Well, he gets struck by lightning. They're holding hands. And she gets like her, her arm gets kind of destroyed. And she gets like these lines all up her. And she really can't use her arm for all these years since then. But when Agony takes over, she is healed. But she's electric. But that's all the payoff. Nothing really else happens from there. Are they going to keep going? I don't know. It really reminded me a lot of Pepper Potts and Iron Man 3 when she becomes rescue. And that's basically it. So Venom is dead. Eddie Brock is alive, Eddie Brock is rescued, he is taken to a hospital, and he finds out that he has been exonerated of all of his crimes. They no longer, he's no longer responsible for them, but if he utters a word of any of it to anybody, he'll be put in the darkest, deepest place they can find him. Which is funny, because that's where we see Null. But anyway, so, he moves to New York. He fulfills his dream with Venom and moves to New York City. And at New York City, he visits the Statue of Liberty, which is what Venom always wanted to see. And he says, I'll never forget you. And the movie ends-ish. Okay, this is when we get our first real glimpse of Null. He refers to himself as the King in Black, and he basically says he's coming one way or another. 
he's coming, and we get a really good glimpse of him, and he looks, like, really cool. Any circus voice fits, but the design of his face, if you like the comic accuracy, I think they nailed it on, on his look. Yeah, like, he didn't do anything in this movie. He's there. He's a presence throughout, which I thought was really good, but at the end, when you got there, you're like, okay, where are you going with this? I hope they know where they're going with it. There's rumors of the MCU, obviously, but I'm thinking it's more probably for the Sony-verse. A little less exciting when you stick them there. But there's no more Venom, so what's the point? Or is there no more Venom? As the end credits continue and we're like, oh, what's going on? You know, you finished your popcorn an hour ago. The credits are longer than the movie. So by the time we get to the end, we see the vial that was left in the bar. And a cockroach approaches the vial. That vial contained a piece of Venom. Now, whether or not Venom knew this when he sacrificed himself remains to be seen. Also, that would mean that the Codex is still out there, which I think also coincides with the, with uh, Null's post credit scene there. Like, he knows the Codex, the Codex is still around. Even though we get a shot kind of symbolizing that the Codex has been destroyed, perhaps it's not. Perhaps it's not. If that all remains, who knows? Who knows? It's very open-ended. It's kind of like the ending, like, Venom's death was very, like I said, it was done very well, I thought. But then you kind of contradict it with this. And you're setting up a whole new world based on this. It's It's kind of a weird decision. Not the weirdest Sony's done. Also, not even a bad one, really, technically. Like, it's not even that bad. It's not really like you're like, well, this just ruined my life. It's not like the Morbius end credit scenes where, like, what is happening? What is going on? That, that, that This movie, like I said, this movie is a fun ride. If you just check your brain cells at the door, get your popcorn, and sit down, relax, and enjoy it, you're going to, I think you would enjoy it. If you like the first two, you'll definitely enjoy it. I, I don't think I'm going to watch this with my wife. I think that she would hate this movie with a passion. It's definitely not for everybody. But yeah, I, I, I enjoy it. I Whether or not I would recommend it, again, if you are a fan of Venom, it's a must-see. And if you are wishy-washy on them, I would say probably wait for digital, to be honest. I'd probably say wait for digital on that one. But I really did enjoy it. It was a great ending to their story. Uh, do I want to see more? Obviously. But I also am very, very content with where they ended things. And I'm happy that they ended it the way that they did so that's my review of venom 3 venom the last dance let me know what you thought of venom the last dance in the comments down below thanks so much for watching everybody may you be the master of your own universe